Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. I'm not going to try to tell you that math is as beautiful as the universe. Actually, I don't think it can be as beautiful as the universe. Because math is just a abstraction of the universe. We attempt to model the universe so we can understand it better. Well, today we're going to be talking about ways to model the universe using graphs. And we're going to start with some simple graphs. And before long, we're going to move into some more complicated graphs. And later in your mathematical careers, you may get into some very complicated graphs. But today we're just going to get started. And we're going to talk about the coordinate plane, quadrants, ordered pairs, linear functions, vertical and horizontal lines, and a type of transformation, translations. A coordinate plane is really just two number lines brought together. Here's one number line, and this is showing the, the potential values of x. And it's one-dimensional, because there's only one thing that's varying, x. But what if we had two things that might vary, both x and y? We could bring two number lines together and see how x and y vary uh, with each other. And that's what a coordinate plane is. And we could plot an equation on this coordinate plane. We've done this before in earlier lessons. We could create a table of x values, our input values, and y values, our output values. We could plot those points on the coordinate plane. And then we could draw a line. And that line represented all the combination of x and y values that satisfy the equation y equals x plus 2. And we can define the various sections of this coordinate plane as quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. This line represents every combination of x value and y value that satisfies the equation y equals x plus 2. Well, let's explore that a little further. What if x equaled 1? What would y equal? Well, that's easy to figure out. We just substitute 1 for x. We get y equals 1 plus 2, or y equals 3. Now we've got an x value and a y value that satisfy the equation y equals x plus 2. And we can list that and describe where it is on the uh, coordinate plane by listing it in x, y notation. That's an ordered pair, x and then y. In this case, our x is 1, our y is 3, so the ordered pair is 1, 3. On the coordinate plane, it appears right there, where x equals 1 and y equals 3. That's the point 1, 3. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Hopefully this is just review for you. We're supposed to determine the ordered pair that describes the location of each of these points, and then we're supposed to determine what quadrant each of the points is in. Well, we'll start with uh, A. That makes sense, doesn't it? A is about five units to the right of the origins. That's five positive X and then three positive Y. So the point is five, three, and it's in quadrant one. Quadrant one is the quadrant in the upper right-hand corner. And the progression of the numbers is counterclockwise from 1 and ends at 4 on the bottom right. How about point B? Point B is negative 4 
for the x value and positive 1 for the y value. So it's negative 4, 1, and it's in quadrant 2. And point C is a positive 6 x value and a negative 6 y value. So it's at point 6 minus 6 in quadrant 4. Well, this line, y equals x plus 2, is a line. It's a straight line. And we call that a linear function. And we call the equation a linear function. And hopefully you'll notice that that x and that y are just to, to the first power. Well, what would happen if our x were to the second power? What if y equaled x squared? What would that look like? Well, we're going to study that later on, and you'll discover that it looks a lot like that. That's called a parabola, and you'll see it's not a straight line. So if it's a linear equation, the variables are only going to have powers of 1. And as we get into higher powers, squared or cubed, then the graph's going to add some extra dimensions and some extra twists and turns. Do you remember studying transformations in earlier math courses? You probably learned how a triangle or another geometric shape could move around a coordinate grid and, and how you could describe that motion. Well, we're going to use transformations in today's lesson and in later lessons to help us understand how changes in an equation are reflected by changes in the graph for that equation. Now we've got this equation, y equals x plus 2, so let's play with that a little bit. And one point on y equals x plus 2 is the point 0, 2. So y equals x plus 2. Well, what if we wanted to subtract 7 from our y value? We could say y equals x plus 2 minus 7. And we could simplify that to y equals x minus 5, because 2 or positive 2, minus 7, is minus 5. And if we were to graph y equals 2, excuse me, y equals x minus 5, it would be the same graph we had before, except we would have slid it down 7 spaces. And that point that we earlier identified as 0, 2, would no longer be at 0, 2 because we changed our y value by 7 spaces. We slid the line down 7 units. It would now be 0, 2 minus 7 or 0 minus 5. And we call that a vertical translation. So a vertical translation is a motion of our line up or down, or a change in the y values. Well, what would a horizontal translation be? Well, horizontal means left to right, so I bet that a horizontal translation would slide our line to the left or to the right. And our point, which was 0, 2, if we wanted to move that whole line to the right or to the left, we'd have to modify the x value because the x is the axis that moves from the left to the right. Let's say we wanted to slide that 3 to the right. We'd want to add 3 to our x value. So our point would no longer be 0, 2. It would be 0 plus 3, comma 2, or 3, 2. And that line would slide over three places to the right so that our x value is no longer 0, it was 3. And that point would be at 3, 2. Try this one. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. Well, our line is supposed to be translated three units horizontally. That's a horizontal transformation or a horizontal translation of three units to the right. Right and left is the x-axis, 
Changes to the right or the left represent changes in our x value. And changes to the right mean increasing x values. If I'm moving 3 to the right, I'm increasing my x value positive 3. So, my point, minus 3, 3, minus 3 is the x value, is going to be changed if I translate this line 3 units to the right. It's going to be increased by 3. My x value is going to be minus 3 plus 3. And my y value wouldn't have changed. It'll remain 3. Well, minus 3 plus 3 is 0. So my new point will be 0, 3. When my line moves over, that point that was minus 3, 3 will become 0, 3. Let's quickly review horizontal and vertical lines. Let's say we had the equation y equals minus 4, and we were going to graph that. Well, y equals minus 4 means that no matter what the x value is, y equals minus 4. y doesn't change with the x value. y is always minus 4. So I could plot a couple of points where y equals minus 4. And those two would work perfectly well. And then I could draw a line between those two points. And you'll see I had a horizontal line. So a horizontal line is going to be represented by an equation that says y equals some constant value. How about this equation? x equals minus 4. Well, again, that equation means that no matter what the y value is, in every occasion, x equals minus 4. x always equals minus 4. So I could draw a line where x equals minus 4. And for every one of those y values on the line, x still equals minus 4. And that's a vertical line. Well, that's our lesson on the coordinate plane in Introduction to Graphing Equations. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you had a pretty good time. Now it's time to test your knowledge. Go to www.mastermath.info and you'll find there some quizzes and some worksheets to help test your knowledge. Well, I hope you had a good time and I hope we see you again real soon.